I pulled out uh, one of the handouts that we originally started off with on day one about the <coughs> God's name is a logical one. So I have copied one of those for everyone if you want to just pass them around. I, I work in Ancasol, which is an organisation that uses transformation, uh, the power of transformative <coughs> education to learning leadership and enterprise to end the injustice of poverty. Uh, I was thinking to, to narrow it down, maybe I'll just get rid of all that and just go straight into the, the, the survey that we did. But I thought it actually forms part because if that's our mission, if you like. We had two services, fledglings earlier is education and, and uh, <coughs> training and Shanti education and training, but they've recently merged. And as a result of that now, we would have about 650 adults on, uh, enrolled in about 29 programs. Some of them are very short, can just be 10 weeks, some of them are three year degree programs. They are, there's um, accredited and non-accredited courses that people can attend and we support access to the national qualifications framework from PTAC level 2 up to PTAC level 8. And all, but none of our programs operate in isolation and they are all support, uh, all the programs are underpinned, if you like, by uh, a range of student supports and an active citizenship program. And an emphasis on building a capacity for active learner leadership. Now I say that active learner leadership because it was only when we started to look at measuring outcomes we realised that we documented lots of things and we measured lots of outcomes. Um, but there was lots of things we didn't. And when we were looking at the programmes and having our work, working group discussions we realised we have a huge emphasis on active learner leadership but no one's ever asked us too much about it so we didn't document it. And it was a really interesting learning experience for us of just looking at how we measure outcomes and what we would do. And organisations and funders and that are looking for uh, more documented evidence in terms of uh, uh, your practice. But we found that also that uh, it does help us account for our own practice and improve our services. It has definitely impacts on managing your resources uh, and advocacy on behalf of I've been listening to Aidan this morning, which I found frightening to, to, to say the least. Uh, it definitely will enhance our potential to attract funds from governments and any of the uh, philanthropic organisations or individual donors. So, we looked around at a load of different kind of possible models and the one that we came up with, which is the one that I've, that I've passed around, you can read it at your leisure later, is uh, the logic model. And really it's a bit like it says what it does in the can, it shows that there's a logical link between uh, our you know, resources, activities, outputs, outcomes, and the impact you want to have in the community. So we thought originally that we understood all that really well. We went, oh yeah, that's all very clear. Should we do that anyway? And we have all that. And, um, and we broke into working groups and we started to look at all our programs. And we had the coordinator of the degree program and coordinator of the childcare training. and. Uh, what we found was initially we, kind of, we thought, so we're grand, we document lots of outcomes. But we'd have very good outcomes, very uh, well indicated, well measured for one particular program, say like our Young Women's Education program, which ran for several pro uh, cycles, in terms of their supporting lone parents to progress in terms of education or employment. And we'd have a whole range of performance indicators and measurable outcomes for that program program that was funded maybe through the BC didn't quite collect the same. So what we were finding was we were excellent at collecting outcomes in different pockets, but we didn't have a coherent picture. So after much debate and discussion then, because what the logic model says to you is, what is it, instead of kind of moving your planning stage along here, they say, what is it the impact that you want to have? What is it... Uh, and although you may not be solely responsible for that impact out in the wider society, you'll have a, you will have an influence upon it, some influence. So you kind of work backwards then. So what are the outcomes that you'd want in the medium, or the, the, the short, or the medium, or the long term? What needs to happen? Who are the people you need to reach? What are the, uh, uh, um, the courses, the workshops, the curriculum, etc.? And who are the people? So you work backwards in a sense. And when we did that and started to discuss it, what we realised was, as an organisation, we need to go back in a sense to what our mission statement is and what our strategy is and kind of go, why were we set up in the first place to have an impact on the, in the community of West Tower? And what does that look like? So we worked our way back as an organisation and said, rather than look at any programme, let's look at 
what is the impact on an individual, their family and community, if you like, uh, to come to Ancason for a year, to come in for an academic? Has it any impact at all? Are we doing anything of any value? So <clears throat> what we decided the best way to look at that was to put together a survey. So we designed a survey which uh, is given to every student that comes in in the beginning of the academic year if they're enrolled in a program, accredited or non-accredited, that lasts longer than 10 weeks. The survey has two parts to it. Um, so they, they fill in the survey in the, in the September, and then they fill in as part two of it, if you like, which is practically identical in May, usually in May. And what you're trying to do is monitor the differences the in there. designed to measure changes in their personal development, active citizenship, and independent learning. So. Uh, when we put together the survey, the first one we did was in 2009-2010. And uh, what we did with that had kind of established a baseline data. And we just did it with the Shanty students. Uh, some resistance to it. The tutors thought it took up a lot of time. People didn't like it. There was a whole series of, of uh, uh, challenges, if you like, to, do, to doing it. So we improved it the second year and we tried it again in 2010-2011. And uh, we've just, 2011, 2012, so we're beginning, just beginning our fourth cycle of it. Each year we vastly improve the data that, uh, and how we get it. And also the cultural change, it's now accepted within the organisation, there's a greater understanding of the need for it. We've built up our skill in terms of implementing it and supporting people to fill it in. And we've taken a lot of feedback from uh, students and tutors as to the usefulness of it. Uh, one of the things that was useful within it, Nala helped us in terms of analysing the data because we just didn't have the expertise and uh, as part of that then they used the data as part of a, a research study they did looking at diversity in adult education in Ireland. And again that just put us out there as a national piece of research and it was very valuable that Ancason was involved in that. Uh, and that report is available uh, through NALA. Uncle, as I said, has an active citizenship program. So there's always a huge emphasis every year in terms of having politicians evenings, making sure people are registered to vote, etc. So when we analysed the data in, ter uh, uh, in relation to that, uh, we asked uh, the respondents, were they registered to vote in the local and general elections? Our, da our baseline data was already quite high and it has maintained that, so there's 84 or 90 percent respectively when we, when we analyse the data. But one of the interesting ones that, that came up was uh, between the September and the May there was a 50 percent increase um, in the number of people who were involved in their local community. Now you can't say definitively they're involved in their local community because they come to Ancason, but there was enough of a significant increase to say there was a causal relationship uh, between undertaking a course in Ancason and their growing community awareness and participation. <coughs> and I'm sure that's under supported by our the Active Citizenship Programme. I've mentioned some of the challenges in relation to doing that. Uh, I know when we started, we went around in circles in terms of what was an outcome, what was an input, uh, understanding the language, uh, what's a, a short term. Like, um, if I was to give an example, we have a degree in leadership and community development and a short term uh, outcome for that, if you like, would gain a professional qualification and the knowledge, skills and competencies to become uh, effective leaders in the community and voluntary sector at local and national level. So it's a very, it's a clear cut one in terms of this. The intermediate is much more about how behaviour or practices have changed. So the intermediate outcome for that degree programme is improved employment prospects and progression into higher education opportunities. And the long term, which is usually, they say, from kind of seven to ten years, is a change in the development of the local community and contribution to the creation of new knowledge. So you can see how that degree programme relates back to our uh, original kind of mission statement and strategic plan and looks how we would hope to be able to measure an impact on the community. Our first cohort of students have graduated from that degree program and we're tracking them. That's the other important lesson that we learned, that we need to track past participants and monitor their, prog uh, their progress. And we can uh, very clearly 
the, uh, the number of people who have improved job prospects, who have gone from maybe part-time to full-time, who have got a, uh, gone into a paid position as opposed to a voluntary position, or have been promoted within their, uh, within their organisation. And also within our uh, leadership network and that the experience of doing the degree has enabled to build their capacity to be much more active in terms of their local community and how they articulate and interact, for example, with the South Dublin County Council, etc. So we're beginning to see the seeds of change that we would hope we can measure at a later stage in terms of the long-term outcomes. And uh, okay, some of the other challenges were as I said, limited resources. It was a big, uh, a whole new area for us. We would have loved to have had a research intern to work with us. And we made several steps forward and a couple of steps backwards in, in the process. And spoiled surveys. That was definitely a lesson to learn. It's quite a long survey. There's 36 kind of questions and some of them are broken down. And we try and keep it as tick box as possible. And, uh, but still. And if someone... Even if you go into a class and you talk people through it and you take it at their own pace, uh, some people will still rush ahead. We didn't correct, we didn't, I didn't kind of scan the map to make sure everything was okay, which I should have done. Because if you do that straight away, you can go back in and correct any errors. But, uh, so we're learning as well. Tips in terms of you're looking at measuring outcomes, it really pays to take time to, to, to uh, discuss which particular outcomes and indicators that you want to monitor. There are like a vast, there are so many if you think about your own kind of practices. Uh, very useful to, to look at, I'm sure within each of your programs you probably uh, uh, measure particular out, uh, uh, outcomes. So I'll give the example of the Young Women's Program. We were very good at tracking them, but we don't track other students, so we've learned we need to maybe follow that up. Uh, we've learned that we need to establish a very, an excellent database that checks with people when they come in every year. Can we contact you? Can we keep your records on file? Can, you know, where you're going to be uh, participate in any of our research? So we have the administrative background, if you like, has, has improved as, as we've gone along. Um, and I think because we collected outcomes from one program that didn't match the outcomes in another, we wasted a lot of time. Now we're much more as an organisational perspective going, what do we need to collect from everything? And uh, that works, that has worked a lot better. As we've, collect, as we've found as we've gone along, uh, our, this approach to kind of measuring outcomes has definitely helped in terms of identifying gaps in our, ser uh, gaps in our service. So for ex and a, a very good example of that would be, uh, we, we noticed when we, came, when we were analysing the surveys that some classes you could identify were much better in terms of developing their active citizenship. So we could start to look at how come that class is doing it and that one isn't? And uh, what way can we support that tutor? Or does there need to be some training for tutors around making sure that we have that radical element back in each of the, the programs? And we've done a piece of work around that. And um, Also, the, as I was saying earlier, the piece about the active learner leadership um, that was something that we hadn't documented. It wasn't, it wasn't that we didn't value it as an outcome, we just hadn't recorded it. Now that we became aware of that gap, we're much better at capturing it all along the line. Because we want to capture it, we talk about it and promote it, both with students, we're much more explicit. And uh, that has had a knock-on effect then that I know, for example, with our... Uh, <coughs> I could give you a list as long as my arm of the, how, for example, the basic English class have demonstrated their, their active learner leadership, for, for example. And they've gone from a class over the number of years that wouldn't speak at events, who wouldn't really necessarily get involved, that now it's a normal expectation among their peers that everyone gets involved and goes along and gets, uh, uh, speaks at events or whatever it might be. They're an amazing group and an amazing class. So it has raised that issue <coughs> at an organisational tutors and student level, uh, which has definitely been a very positive outcome. What we've learned as we've gone along is that uh, in order to make our outcome, our measures stand up better, uh, we need to have introduced new uh, ways of collecting data, which is like a post-programme survey. And right from the planning stages now, we're setting ourselves up to be able to do that in a much more, in a more effective manner.